Hello, welcome to Dumb Brain. Today we're going to be exploring the reaction between calcium hydroxide and aluminum, or lack thereof. Well, what we were wondering is if anything would happen at all. So, the reason we might think that it wouldn't happen is that calcium hydroxide is favorable to aluminum hydroxide, which would be the double replacement reaction if a reaction occurred that way. But, Another option is that it could also make a compound called calcium aluminate, which there are various forms of, and we did research upon this to see if any of these were really possible or if it would actually happen, and we were indecisive. So we decided to come up with an experiment using the scientific method, and that's what we're here to explain today. All right, so the general idea is this. You have calcium hydroxide, which looks a little something like this. It's a calcium right here with two hydroxide groups and the idea is that when you add this calcium hydroxide into water you know H2O delicious stuff that we all drink and love it'll separate because it's a polyatomic ion it has calcium which is positive and hydroxides which are negative and uh, the hydrogen molecule or the I'm sorry the water molecule will break it up and it'll form a slurry of calcium uh, three separate hydroxide groups and one lonely hydrogen putting around somewhere out there. So this mixture should be mostly basic because of the, the three, uh, three hydroxide groups together here. Um, but when you add in something like aluminum, which is what we were thinking, which has a plus three charge as a metal, um, we were thinking somewhere around the lines that it would react with it because other, uh, other basic solutions, like sodium hydroxide, will react with aluminum uh, once you add it into them. And we were thinking, well, these, these hydroxides and these calciums, since these are negative and aluminum is positive, we were thinking they would probably react together and form something sort of like uh, calcium aluminate, which is uh, actually a real compound. However, there's, there's a whole bunch of them, like uh, Gabe mentioned earlier, so we couldn't figure out which one it would form. So we were wondering if it would form a calcium aluminate or if it would form uh, a calcium hydroxide group. And the problem is, calci a lot of the uh, calcium uh, aluminate, um, a lot of the calcium aluminate compounds react with water. And since they're in a water solution, um, they will form calcium hydroxide again. So the, the reaction loops around. So your calcium turns back into calcium hydroxide, and it can't do that forever because uh, if you're familiar with the activation energy required to actually do things, you can't have infinite activation energy inside of a solution. So we were wondering, will it form anything at all? Because based on what we know, it shouldn't be forming anything. So that's what we're going to find out. So here we are. We've set up the experiment. We've got three separate ingredients. We've got distilled water so that no uh, side products can react or do anything unexpected. We've got calcium hydroxide, and we've got a, approximately one gram of aluminum, if you can see there. So, we got one gram of aluminum. We're going to make a one molal solution, which means that's one mole of calcium hydroxide to one kilogram of solution. So, what we're going to do is, it's uh, 7.4 grams, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to add 7.4 grams of calcium hydroxide. So what we did was, to calculate this, we um, found the, molar, or the molality of, or we found the molar mass of calcium hydroxide, and uh, then we divided that, we took that number and divided that by 10 to get a lower number because 74 grams was ridiculous. So we're going to use 7.4 grams, and since uh, it's moles per kilogram for molality. Instead of uh, using 1,000 grams, we're going to divide that by 10 as well, and we're going to get 100 grams of total solution mass. So I'm just adding the calcium here to 7.4 grams. I'm going to add it slowly to get to that number. We want fairly accurate so it can be constant every time. Okay, we're going to have to take a little bit off because that rounds up to 7.50, which we don't want. Okay, and then we'll add a tiny bit more again. And we 
getting close. Just gotta pour it in carefully. That might have been too much, or good enough. And there we go, 7.39, pretty much 7.4. So, we're going to add distilled water until we get, whoops, <laughs> exactly 100 grams of solution. So, if we add it in carefully, as not to wet the scale, And we'll use a pipette for the last ones. Yeah, we'll go up to like 90. Okay. Oh wow, that was pretty close. Alright, let's get a pipette out. Alright. Our science cabinet. Here we are. Okay, so we've got a syringe. Let's try and extract some water. This has been cleaned. We don't put dirty equipment in our cabinets. So, we add until we get pretty much 100 grams of water, as close as we can get to it. Just dripping it in, slowly. Nitro. This isn't nitroglycerin, but still, we want accurate results. So, that's pretty much 100 grams. The point eleven should be... Fine. <laughs> so, right now, we're just going to do a qualitative test. So we're going to drop in the one gram of aluminum and just see if anything happens. First we're going to stir the solution so that all the calcium hydroxide that can dissolve is dissolved. The scale's freaking out, but that's okay. You'll notice that even though it's a solution, that it's a very cloudy solution. It's uh. Kind of like milk. In fact, milk does have a lot of calcium in it. Alright, we'll get back so, to you when the solution's ready. Yeah. So, our solution is fully uh, stirred and dissolved. It seems like it may be a suspension, but it also could be a solution. It may it looks like it's kind of settling into layers if you look at the side, but that might just be the meniscus. We're not entirely sure at this time. But anyways, here we have our one gram of aluminum, and basically we're just going to drop it in and observe closely to see if anything happens. So we're going to look at it from the top through air. Now those could just be air bubbles that were trapped inside the aluminum. Though if those are trapped inside the curls of the aluminum, it's quite a bit of gas. It seems like the aluminum is floating in the solution, which should normally happen because it's less dense than water, I think. I'm not exactly sure about that, but pretty sure. Yeah, so at this time we can see there are bubbles forming, quite large ones in fact. Uh, we might do a test to see if those are hydrogen or not, but we don't really know at this time. Get back to you when uh, more things show up. Also, remember safety. I mean, you may not need this much, but just something for your eyes, because you don't want this stuff in your eyes because it'll burn your eyes, maybe make you blind. Forever, that would suck. I'm going to light this match and see if any of these hydrogen bubbles ignite. Well, assuming they're hydrogen. They could be oxygen. So, alright, we're going to light this match and... So this is a test to see if they are hydrogen bubbles. That and was a pop. there was a pop. There was it a looks pop. like we kind of burned the solution, which hopefully won't mess with any results. Actually, only, it's, this is only a qualitative experiment, so we should not mess with any results. Yeah. So Sense. hopefully we can blow this out with the fan. Oh, I said the fan on standby, kids. <laughs> also, fire extinguishers. They're empty, but still have some. <laughs> yeah, so we heard popping. 
oxygen wouldn't do that. So we know now that there is indeed hydrogen present in the solution. So hydrogen being produced. Add that to the list of things we know about this uh, reaction. All right. All right, so we ran the reaction for a while, and the problem is um, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> no, but we figured out that the uh, calcium hydroxide does react with the aluminum, and it's forming something called... Possibly. This is a possible. It's, a pos it's possibly forming something called calcium tetrahydroxoaluminate. It's an extremely long name, I know. A mouthful. Yes, and, and it's just spilling out onto my cheek. But we know this because... Uh, hydrogen is coming out of it. And we didn't suspect that any hydrogen was going to be coming out of it. The problem was that the calcium hydroxide, in our theory, was reacting with the aluminum, but then forming more calcium hydroxide. It turns out it is doing that, but through the process of forming this calcium hydroxide, it's going to eventually use through all the aluminum by forming calcium tetrahydroxoaluminate. Therefore not being an infinite loop of aluminum reacting with calcium hydroxide. Eventually it chokes itself out. So the activation energy problem isn't, isn't really there. It was just something that we came up with because we didn't know what compound it was going <laughs> to be forming. So we're going to do some more tests with it, probably in another video sometime. But for now, we do know that we are indeed forming a... Uh, something. Something. <laughs> possibly calcium tetrahydroxide. We did test with a flame test, and we did feel... Or we did feel... We did find out that there is hydrogen gas being produced. So it's quite possible that something else could be going on, but we... Uh, we Hypothesis, our previous hypothesis was incorrect. Yes, our hypothesis was that nothing would happen, and so far we've proven that wrong. Yeah, so that's all for now. See you guys later, I guess.